pinball in lockdown. New heist game revealed. New Hot Wheels game revealed. Dennis Nordman leaves Deep Root Pinball. Hi, my name is Jonathan Houston, and I'm the uh, editor of the uh, two-time award-winning uh, pinball magazine. Uh, and I'm joined here today with... Martin Ebb. I'm editor of the no-time-winning pinball news website and... Um, various other things that we do as well right. and we're here to look back on the wonderful month of march 2020 yes and, and uh, uh, it's no time award winning uh, you, you you said it incorrectly it is. Let, let me point it out you you won no awards whatsoever and i won two yes in fact i won not two won an award twippies twice. Yes, two twippies. So, uh, for everybody who uh, who missed out, um, yes, Pinball Magazine won a second twippy, and the first thing I did was actually in my acceptance speech, uh, which I recorded before the show, uh, because I didn't expect uh, to win, I announced that I would be giving my award away to Ryan Clayter and Nick Baldrich, who produced Coin of Carnival, and I still stand by that, and the reason for that is, and I'll keep this very short, um, I did not publish a new magazine in 2019. Instead, Brian, uh, Ryan and uh, Nick uh, did publish Coin of Carnival, so therefore I feel they deserve to win. Um, and apparently I won for my newsletters, but I think if it last year was the award for a favorite pinball publication, uh, I don't think the award, the, the, the category should be extended and allow more, uh, uh, even single articles to be, um, uh, uh, qualifiable for uh, uh, to win the award um, I think that, that just reduces the value of the award so because Pinball Magazine did not publish a new issue in 2019 I figured it makes sense that I would give it to Ryan and Nick um, of Coin Up Carnival and um, uh, I think they really deserve to win so I'm more than happy to do so so Enough about that. Oh. Oh, that's very, very magnanimous of you, and I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, as a publication, they, they were the standout publication of the year. Absolutely, um, which is why I think they deserve. Which to is win. what the category used to be, and yes. uh, it's obviously got expanded this year. But yeah, uh, and but congratulations year, anyway I'm, to I'm, you I'm, for, for your for your victory and uh, in in the category as it was redefined, and. Um, and a very nice gesture to give that to uh, to uh, Ryan and, and Nick for the, for Coin Up Carnival, which is right. a, a very worthy publication. Right. So, and um, uh, not everybody appreciated my acceptance speech because um, some might feel that I was disrespectful to the people that um, voted for Pinball Magazine. That was not my intent. Um, I was trying to uh, uh, impersonate a. Um, a running gag from the uh, Allo Allo TV show, uh, which might not be that familiar with that many people, so um, that that probably uh, did not um, uh, got understood as being a joke. Um, sure, I uh, most certainly respect the people that voted for Pinball Magazine by all means, um, but as I explained, um, I recorded it not even in the uh, uh, remotely assuming that I would be winning because I did not publish a new magazine last year. I figured the award would go to Coin Up Carnival anyway. Um, apparently it didn't, but now they get it after all. So Yeah, great. Okay. Well, let's move on and look at, um, at the main... I'll say the maybe it's the secondary news of this month, which is well, what an amazing month it has been. It has been, and it was a real... Unexpected month, I think. I don't think um, I don't think either of us in in the end of our, our last podcast at uh, the end of February could right. possibly have imagined this is what would have this is a situation we would be in at the end of March. Right. Now, well, we were looking forward to a, an amazing trip coming up to visit the, the launch of uh, Deep Root Pinball, uh, the Texas Pinball Festival, uh, and then a major road trip up to uh, to visit a few people on the way and end up at the uh, Midwest Gaming Classic. Right. And 
none of that happened. Uh, no. Rather disappointingly. Yeah, um, for those, uh, well, what the first thing that happened was that um, I would was not able to uh, fly to America uh, because uh, Europe right. got, got banned from flying into America. A few days later, that applied to the UK as well. So yeah, that, that right. was the yeah. first problem. And then the Texas Pinball Festival got cancelled, Midwest Gaming Classic got cancelled, Deep Root cancelled their launch event, and basically there was no reason to go, even if we could have. No, and then probably wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been able to get back again if we had gone. Right. So it was, uh, oh, I was uh, I was away uh, for the weekend and uh, sort of checking my phone and it's like, oh, um, the flights have been cancelled from Europe, so you can't go, um, but I can still go. But that, how's that going to work? And so I was trying to work out plans for that. And uh, and then the Deep Root thing. No, then, then the, um, the Texas Film Festival got cancelled. And it's like, well, I can't do that. Um, then is the Midwest Gaming Class it's still going to happen? So I could possibly do that. Then that got cancelled. And then I couldn't fly at all. And it's like, everything's cancelled now. Um, so our trip just gradually kind of fell apart over the course of uh, basically a day, really, from being this this amazing journey to nothing at all. Right. So here we are, sit, both sitting at home, both um, in lockdown. Yeah, not, and the, and the, the really, my house. The really uh, disappointing part of this all is that finally this would have been the episode where we get to introduce Gary to our people. And really give him yeah. a, a proper role in this podcast. Yeah, he was meant to be the star of this month's uh, podcast, really. But uh, you know, we're, we're hoping he'll, he'll call in a bit later anyway, so we can uh, we can at least hear from him, even if uh, uh, he can't be with us in person. So, well, uh, uh, fingers uh, crossed. Let Let's hope that he's uh, doing fine, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll hear from him later on. I think we're both doing okay. We're uh, virus-free at the moment, aren't we? Yes, I, we are, I am. thankfully. Yeah, yeah. although we're both keeping uh, socially distanced to yeah. the order of uh, a couple of hundred miles. Yeah, I'm sitting uh, uh, six feet away from my laptop. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm way too close to this microphone, so I'm just going to stay two metres away and uh, do the podcast from back Say here. what? Oh, oh, okay. Um, maybe I won't. Let's hope it doesn't get transmitted that way. So, um, with that in mind, let's um, look at what's happened um, with the uh, the various closures and lockdowns and changes to manufacturing that have happened well, to all the different pinball companies. Well, well, and uh, see who's who's still going. Well, let's start with that because that's probably the oddest thing that nobody would <laughs> ever have predicted if we. And I suggested we should have made it a headline, but I'm telling you right now, mm. as a special extra headline, Dutch Pinball, the only pinball manufacturer left actually cranking out games. Who would yeah, have thought that? Thought that one month ago. What? A, a year ago. Even a few weeks ago. Well, <laughs> no, even a couple of weeks ago. Well, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, But that's actually the case because um, Illinois is in uh, has a stay-at-home policy, um, which means all factories are closed. And the same goes for certain areas in Texas where uh, Multimorphic is uh, operating and, um, well, Deep Root isn't cranking out games yet. Um Homepin isn't making any games right now because they just moved to Taiwan. Um, Haggis Pinball isn't manufacturing any games because they haven't even finished their design. Um, so that basically leaves Dutch Pinball as the only manufacturer producing games right now. Yeah. I mean, how are they able to keep manufacturing? Do you, do you know? I mean, there's presumably a... Um, some kind of lockdown in in uh, in the Netherlands, no, it's not, isn't there? It's not a lockdown. It's um, um, there is a stay at home no, stay at home policy uh, applicable, but in uh, the, the case of Barry, um, he has his um, Dutch pinball uh, company unit uh, where the games are being manufactured, uh, relative uh, rather close um, to his home. 
and uh, I think they're only working with a couple of people in there. And basically, the rule is as long as you can keep like six feet distance from each other, then you're still allowed to work together. Which oh, is right. there's no no limit on essential companies still going there. No, uh, well, there is a limit on. I think there's a maximum of three people allowed to be in the same room. But with three people, you can still manufacture games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I'm not even sure whether they are up to three people. It could be just uh, two. But regardless, they are still manufacturing games, and that's something nobody saw coming. So Indeed. congrats. Well, let, let's let's just go through um, exactly what the other companies are up to at the moment. Right. Um, Spooky Pinball. Um, Obviously, in uh, in Wisconsin, in Benton, um, yes. they have uh, a thirty day statewide shutdown in uh, in the state. It would be because it's statewide, and uh, that that actually comes just as they've moved out of their second factory into their into their third. Right. So they've moved into a bigger premises, but uh, at exactly the same time, this uh, this shutdown occurs. And uh, Charlie posted on Facebook to say that uh, um, they had been exposed to someone with the COVID-19 um, coronavirus infection and were therefore using the 30-day lockdown to self-isolate at home. So it doesn't look like there's any, any chance of uh, any manufacturing going on there either. Well, it's Benton, um, so it's, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know how close home is to their new facility, but it's, I don't know how strict, um, who knows, they might be setting up stuff in the new facility after all, I don't know, but could be. Well, uh, could be, but there's certainly um, software development going on on their games from the, uh, the, the coders at home. They're still working on it, and maybe the other people are working on on uh, on future games as well um, in their in their own places. But uh, certainly nothing happening at the factory, at uh, their new place. Well, there is no new so, factory um, at the new place because they still need to set up everything. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they have they have the building and they have some stuff in there, but I don't think there's, there's anything any sign of any manufacturing about to happen right. in there. At least uh, not until the, the the shutdown is over. Yeah. Um, down in um, one state, down in Illinois, uh, as you said, there's a, uh, a stay-at-home order which took place on uh, the 21st of March at 5 p.m. and is going to last until at least the 7th of April, and it might be, I think, might have been extended actually now to 30th. I, I think I read that somewhere. That would seem uh, very reasonable to think, yeah, or assume. Yeah. Yeah, Stern put out a press release, uh, well, Gary Stern did, saying that uh, there's, there's nothing basically coming in or, or going out of the factory at this time, although software development, sales, marketing, service um, service uh, calls and accounting staff are, are all uh, responding from home. So they're basically all working at home. Right. Um, so they, they were expected to launch a couple of new games. Right. Uh, certainly uh, one of them at least at the Midwest Gaming Classic, but that didn't happen. So all well, that's put on hold for the moment. Um, of course, Jersey Jack Pinball <laughs> are now neighbours to uh, Stern Pinball in Elk Grove Village. At least their manufacturing is, and they're just moving up there and getting set up when all this uh, kicked in. So that's they're not in the process, as far as we know, of, of actually building or weren't, weren't in the position to build anything before the shutdown right. came along. Um, Obviously, their design teams are still um, capable of working from home because I think that's what they do mostly anyway. Yeah, well, certainly, um, well, I guess Pat Lawler and, and the software guys uh, can, can probably do that. Well, yeah. Jean-Paul is working from home as well. Uh, he's obviously in the Netherlands. And he's also a, a, mm -hmm. a Twippy winner. Congratulations to Jean-Paul. That was for uh, um, which Jersey Jack game? Was that for um, Willy Wonka? For animations on uh, Willy Wonka. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so nothing happening with Jersey Jack pinball either. American pinball, uh, also in Illinois. So no manufacturing there, and they of course are also moving to their to their new. We're in the process of moving to their, their new place that they're uh, they're sharing with uh, Aintron in Palantine. Right. Uh, 
Sorry, carry on. Uh, no, you're completely right. Um, at least they got to reveal their Hot Wheels game. Because they... Yeah, we'll come to that. Right. Let's, not, let's not jump ahead. We're just looking at the coronavirus stories. Oh, the sorry. We'll, sorry. Uh, we'll actually get on to... Uh, I was trying happened. to get to the good news. <laughs> oh, there's some good news, yes. We have to stay tuned for that. It's coming up in, in just a minute uh, after we got through all the, uh, the stuff that's not happening at the moment. Um, yes, as, as you said actually earlier about Multimorphic, they, uh, in, they, have a, um, they don't have a statewide ban or a, a stay-at-home instruction. It's been done on a, on a, on a local government basis. Um, but the, uh, the, the counties around uh, Round Rock, where they are both issued stay-at-home orders uh, until at least the 13th of April. So uh, there should be no uh, manufacturing going on, at least in the, uh, in the multimorphic factory. Right. Uh, they would. They were due to launch uh, their new game at the Texas Pinball Festival, um, and in a moment we'll look at exactly how that went, because they uh, they did launch it, and we'll uh, we'll discuss what, what that game was and um, and give you some details all about it. Right. Uh, uh, so yeah, Deep Root Pinball. Uh, yeah, due to do their launch event, as you said, that was cancelled. Uh, then they they said well they'll. Well, originally they said they wouldn't be able to do it on the scale that they were intending because a lot of people couldn't make it, you being one of them. Then they, so they said they'd do a smaller event. Uh, and then after I and other people couldn't make it, they said they'd do it as an online-only launch on the same at the same time, which was the... Um, 25th? That was the Wednesday before... Yeah, Wednesday before... Oh, Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, no, it was the Wednesday, wasn't it? Wednesday before... Yes. The, Pinball Festival, uh, but then they decided that with, with the Texas Pinball Festival also being uh, called off, then they wouldn't be able to do anything. So they they basically postponed it indefinitely in their in their praise. So um, yeah, so that must be we'll Robert's anything. worst nightmare coming true because that's the second Texas Pinball Festival that he's not presenting his company. Yeah, I don't know whether it's um, a nightmare or. Uh, Quite a convenient uh, reason to not launch at that point. Well, you know, it gives them, gives them an extra, buys them a lot of extra time for when they do actually launch, doesn't it? To come up with uh, even more, uh, even more developed games. Right. So anyway, that. Uh, so it might be a blessing in disguise for them. It could be, yeah. You know, you never know. And um, if, if they weren't able to show their best face at that time, and then uh, another, you know, three, four, six months might uh, might make them look a, a, a lot more impressive when they actually can launch. Uh, so they were, that was going to be the, the sort of launch, press launch, anyway, at, at the uh, San Antonio facility, but uh, that was then going to be followed by the public launch at uh, Texas Show, but uh, te Texas Pinball Festival, but that didn't happen either, so not, nothing happened there, basically, as far as the Deep Root Pinball launch goes. And, and um, yeah, so as far as other shows go, as, as we mentioned uh, earlier, Texas Pinball Festival was cancelled. Midwest Gaming Classic was cancelled. Um, other shows that have been cancelled, uh, Pinball at the Zoo in April, that's been cancelled. Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show in June, that's been cancelled. Uh, the Ann Arbor Pinball Showcase, uh, that uh, was going to be in April, has been postponed to later in the year, but they haven't actually announced exactly when it's going to be because they're still consulting with uh, ticket holders as well as what they're going to do and, and what form that's going to take. Mm -hmm. Tournaments being called off, UK Pinball Open uh, postponed, German Pinball Open uh, in May um, it hasn't actually officially been uh, cancelled but it almost certainly is going to be we're just waiting for the, uh, the official announcement on that it's, it's going to happen right. um, not cancelled yet the Rocky Mountain Pinball Showdown in, uh, in Denver that hasn't yet been cancelled uh, Pintastic in June that hasn't been cancelled either yet, and replay effects in June, uh, Pinburg in July. Sorry, I should say that hasn't been cancelled either at the moment. So okay, well, uh, let's hope the situation is is better by then. But from what I um, uh, expect to happen is that um, sorry, but it seems very likely that those shows might be cancelled after all because it doesn't look like this is going to be a two week thing and then it's over and back to normal. Yes, I think you're right. Um, but at the moment, that's 
that's where that's where we are at the time of recording, which is uh, you know right at the uh, the very end of March. So those shows aren't, uh, are still scheduled. Um, so there's no cancellation notice, but everything else pretty much up until about June is uh, is all off. Um, pretty much all, all the way around the world, I'd say. Yeah. Um, so so, um, from so that, slightly depressing. Uh, but yeah, let's but, move on well, to something a bit more. Let's well, let's hope that everybody is safe, uh, because obviously our uh, listeners are uh, also affected uh, by by uh, the whole coronavirus situation. So hopefully everybody is safe and stay safe. Uh, keep your uh, social distance from everybody, and um, uh, hopefully you stay healthy, and we make it through this crisis and uh, get back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as soon as we, we are out of it and, uh, and back again, then um, please give your support to all those all those companies um, who have uh, been you know been suffering from lack of business. So get out into the arcades and uh, and play pinball, buy pinball, buy parts, and uh, let's get the the pinball business uh, back on its feet and uh, up and running again. And uh, uh, and uh, make sure those companies who who have been struggling uh, can can make it through. Because we don't want to lose any people, and we don't want to lose any companies either. Right. Um, it's going to be uh, well. We still have to see how big the impact of this whole situation will be. Um, what I have understood uh, from uh, talking to uh, Mike Kalinowski of uh, Homepin, who used to be in China, but they actually move to uh, Taiwan um, but uh, the, 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 the results of the virus in China is that uh, uh, a lot of people are still um, either quarantined uh, can't get back to work and the factories that are running uh, are lacking a lot of uh, uh, personnel uh, or employees or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it so they can't um, uh, produce goods at the, the the regular volume that they used to do, which might be causing all sorts of problems in supply chains, and so that's why I think we're gonna um, see um, the, the 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 length of this crisis is is. It's far more going to be then. Even even once the virus itself is gone, we're still dealing with the um, uh, everything well, else. The that aftermath, happened, it, that's yeah, right. the, the aftermath yeah. of the crisis, so to speak, in uh, in terms of uh, industries trying to get back up on their feet, and not just pinball, but other industries as well. Yep, true. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a switch and everything to go back. To it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ramp up hopefully, but uh, there will be there will be some uh, some changes certainly in the way things are done and uh, the rate at which they're done. Right. Uh, anyway, on to happier news. Yes. Yes. So new games. Believe it or not, even Two in this new uh, games in this rather gloomy climate um, where pinball manufacturing is um, it's not actually currently happening anywhere except in the Netherlands. Two new games have been launched. And the first one of those comes from uh, Multimorphic in, yes. in Round Rock that we were just talking about. Yes, and uh, first of all, con uh, com my compliments to you because you did a very uh, good article on that new game, Heist, oh, uh, which much. people can read on uh, pinballnews.com. Um, zero that... award winning. <laughs> Sorry? The zero award winning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But maybe this article will get you an award. Who knows? Oh well, yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the, the heist game. Yeah, um, I was very impressed. I think it's definitely the uh, mm. the best multimorphic um, playfield module that they've they've come up with so far, and it uh, it addresses some of the. Um, some of the criticisms I think of earlier games which is that everything is, is pushed up towards the very back of the playfield where the where the modules are yeah. and although that's actually true on a lot of games anyway on a lot of conventional games uh, that are not modular um, the heist game does have the um, well it introduces a couple of new things it, it, uh, it adds an upper flipper to uh, the right hand side which allows for more cross playfield shots 
right. to be uh, to be included in in future in heist and future games. Right, and it has and a crane. Also, uh, the, well, the crane is a big thing, isn't it? Uh, three axis of movement. It can move left and right, uh, up and down, and it can extend or retract as well. And that extension allows it to move over the the LCD part of the, the play field. If you remember, the, the P3 is uh, has a, um, a big LCD panel uh, on the lower two thirds of the uh, the play field. Then then a, a bank of uh, walls and scoops and then it comes to the upper play field module well this right. this crane crosses that divide and it basically extends the game down and interacts with the well, what's happening on the lcd um in a way that no previous games have right so um so uh, heist is um it's designed uh, well, by the multimorphic team but the design lead well on that was uh, steven silver who's right. been working for multimorphic for a long time doing their videos yeah. and um, I think this is his first sort of uh, game design um, or at least um, first time he's led a game design and uh, yeah I think the reaction to the game uh, was, was very positive well, what did you think when you first saw it um, I was completely blown away with it I was like uh, this is uh, this is really going to put hopefully um, uh, multimorphic on the map as a, uh, a very serious um, a pinball making company, which is ironic to say in these days. But you, know, you, you catch my drift. Um, mm. No, I think um, just looking at the module, it's it's packed. It's got uh, half a, a city built upon there with a grand station and um, a big bank and uh, a police station and what have you. Mm. Um, and lots of shots, lots of diverters um, and that crane. And um, it's probably not a nice thing to say, but I mean it in the mo in the nicest way possible. I think the previous games uh, uh, or uh, playfield modules were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, designed by uh, um, Jerry Stellenberg himself, and in this case he um, stepped aside and let Steven Silver take the lead on this. And uh, although he probably he was involved in a certain way, but he really let the design team do this by themselves and the result is a very um, uh, what's the word well, it's a game that I instantly got enthusiastic about and um, after that I, I've seen uh, video streams of gameplay and I, I really think they they nailed it so well, it's, it's um, a very well, good way even though it's, it, it's not a license uh, as such so you, you, you do have to teach the player, you know what the story is about, but right, but the but, very but title of it sort of gives you a, an awful lot of clues as to what the what the what the idea of the game is. Well, it's a heist with, game with with classic pinball, where you have an original theme. You still can walk up to the game, and if the the theme is usually something that it's easy to understand, and in this case, that's absolutely the case. Um, and it's not only the theme that is um, uh, appealing, so to speak, but I also think, in terms of the artwork, um, that looks very good. Um, it doesn't look intimidating, while that upper playfield could look very uh, intimidating, but it doesn't for some uh, some reason. So, <coughs> sorry, no, that's nothing to worry about. It's just regular cough. I'm worried. Um, I think um, it's a um, it has a low barrier, um, a low entry level, so to speak, mm -hmm. for uh, for new players to, to to start playing, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. well, it certainly it seems to have sold a, a fairly good number of, of the base P three. Uh, pinball platforms um, just on the on the uh, basis of the heist game alone and um, uh, it's worth mentioning that there are some um, some uh, some offers available at the moment um, to buy the heist game with the p3 base cabinet uh, or base unit and also to buy all four games 
together as a package. Um, if you uh, if we look on either on the, on the multimorphic site or in the Pimble News article, there's, there are details of the the pricing offers and uh, how long they're available for. Right. Um, this was all all supposed to be launched um, to coincide with the Texas Pimble Festival. Uh, and the deals would run from then onwards, but I think the timing hasn't changed. So um, I think it's for like four weeks from the Texas show onwards, um, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of these pricing deals. So I'm going to check those out. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it certainly looks a. Uh, and the, the Ocean City um, playfield looks um, it's very attractive. There's lots of moulded uh, buildings on there, as you were saying. I don't know the the the, the, car, the uh, parking lot and the bank and the the jail and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it, the addition of the the um, side flipper, I think, adds in a whole bunch more shots and, and makes it a, a very different playing game to anything we might have seen before on the P3. Right. And then the, uh, what's even more interesting is, um, as this is uh, uh, P3 is a sort of open source platform, um, once people have the uh, the Ocean City uh, or highest um, uh Playfield module. Um, mm -hmm. I think people are already working on uh, different games to be played with that same module. So uh, uh, you get the module now, but there will be more games to be played on that with with that same module later on. Yes, when I first saw it, I thought, "Well, oh, this, this is very definitely you know the, the heist um, upper playfield module," and I can't imagine anybody would, would want to. Would, uh, would be looking at writing other games for it like they have for the uh, the Lexi Lightspeed or the uh, Cannon of the Goon or any of those types of games that fit in with the uh, the other play the other three playful models that are available. But uh, yeah, now you mention it, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't have. And they just certainly do could do mini games, you know, like um, like Happy with Jurassic Park. They have a wizard mode. Well, that could just be a standalone game, couldn't it? So that, that plays on the same playfield, and right. uh, almost like a, a sub a sub story within uh, within the high story. Right, uh, but but you could even design a completely new. I don't know, like a, a tour the city type of game. You just have to make yeah, shots or, or a sequel. That, yeah, something yeah, like that. Heist two. Right. And yeah. um, it's all up to the creativity of, of those uh, able to, to program a new game and, and make sure that they have animations and so on to go with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of course the, uh, the whole look of it could be, could be very different on a, on a follow-up game yeah. to, the, uh, to the heist game. Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of options there. Right. And, uh, and the way the way the toys are used can be different as well. You know, the right. crane could be could be operated in a very different way. Right. But, so um, on ice, I'd say congratulations to uh, Jerry and the entire Multimorphic team. I think they really have a um, a killer game that they should be very proud of, and yeah. I hope they will sell a lot of units of it. Yeah. That's, well, uh, I agree with that. So, but uh, Heist wasn't the only game that was revealed in the past month. Um, a little further, well, quite a lot further north, um, American Pinball uh, released their um, third game, um, yes. the follow-up to Houdini and Oktoberfest. Yeah. And uh, I think we knew what it was. Uh, we might even well, have mentioned it in, in last month. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the uh, rumor title was Hot Wheels, based on the uh, collectible uh, mini cars, and uh, that was yep. correct. And uh, that yep. game got actually um, a soft launch, I would say, at the Amusement Expo, um, which was held in New Orleans, um, probably, I think it was around March 10th, just, just a week before the first um, uh, lockdown situation started occurring. And um, uh, there was a flyer present, uh, at the at the uh, at the show, uh, there was a game present, and uh, I think they sent out a um, uh, a press release as well. Initially, um, uh, I had to look for uh, good images, um, but I saw them after a couple of days. They uh, they became available. There were more playfield detailed photos um, uh, becoming available. It's a very colorful uh, game. Um, two colored rams, uh, one uh, orange one and a and a blue one, 
and um, a spinning Hot Wheels car in the um, in the center of the upper playfield or uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. And uh, as a pinball thirst uh, first. Um, which we don't get to talk about um, uh, that often, um, they have a lenticular back panel. So it's a sort of 3D back panel that if you move your head, then the uh, image on the back panel changes. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, the game is designed by uh, Joe Bolzer. And... um, well, at least they got to reveal it before um, uh, everybody got to stay at home. Um, now it's just True. Uh, now we just have to wonder when will they be able to start shipping them? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, from my point of view, I, I thought it was a, a sort of a slightly chaotic launch because it seemed like they weren't really ready to reveal the game, um, but it just ended up being on the uh, American Pinball stand at the Amusement Expo show, um, placed between a, um, an Oktoberfest and a Houdini. There was no there was no press information sent out. There, didn't see, there were no press pictures available. I actually yeah. contacted them at the time and said, have you got pictures? And they said, we're not going to do anything until we come back from the show. So for a, for about three days, all that was available were sort of just camera phone, uh, sorry, phone camera shots or um, or poor quality video, um, and with, with no information available from from American Pinball at all. And distributors didn't even know what the price was. They were saying they were trying to find out. But um, American Pinball didn't really have that information available. Right. Well, that might have to do just with. To, um, 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 uh, they are new sales uh, uh, sales director. I think it's uh, uh, Michael Grant just got hired a couple of days before the launch of the game. So um, whatever was there is probably there was probably a, a sort of a transitional period, and um, it was probably not the best timing. Uh, no, exactly. But but, but, but okay. Um, but if, so but even they will now, learn from I, that hopefully I, for the I next game. I haven't received anything from them, even though I've asked them twice for information. I haven't received any press pictures or a press release or anything. But I'm, I'm sure it's. I'm sure that is available out there. I've seen. I've seen other pictures, um, um, which um, I did see, which are much uh, better quality than the original ones. Yes. Uh, well, they did post some additional pictures on their Facebook. So by all means, check those out. Yes, I, I, I do have them, but uh, that, you know, it's uh, it's a strange way to launch a, a brand new game. You know, the the third game from from a still a relatively new company, and it just sort of almost leaks out that the game is available. Yeah. Uh, they should be. You think it'd be out there, you know, publicising it with a big fanfare, and uh, even if they're not actually in a position to make it at the moment, I don't think they saw that coming either. But uh, anyway, it's uh, as you say, it's a uh, it's a very attractive looking play field. It's it's um, it seems that, that, that it's aimed more at operators, which is generally not a good thing to be able to say because it means that there's not a lot on the play field. And, um, but what is there is is easily accessible. I'm not sure whether I agree with that. Um, actually, I was I thought it was. Uh, quite refreshing to finally see on a flyer that they were actually uh, addressing operators in that the game is um, uh, easy to uh, maintain and um, uh, typical uh, uh, comments aiming at operators um, because I haven't seen those in on flyers in like 20 years. Well, it does take you back to the to the uh, the premier got the street level games, uh, who were you know at that point they were trying to cut the cost of the game and um, and reduce the feature set on them, make it more easily serviceable by operators. But that didn't go down very well with the operators or players. So it'd be interesting to see whether whether this particular game um, fares any better. I mean, the price. The street price of the game, as it appears to be available now from various distributors, is six thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars. So it's not exactly a cut price game, but uh, it doesn't look a cut price game. I have to say that. But on the playfield, as you say, the main toy is a, is a spinning car, which doesn't seem to be 
interactive in any way other than the speed at which it rotates. Right. Um, you, you don't hit it with the ball or anything like that. Um, and the other thing is the sort of, you know, the, the up kicker, which is kind of like a like the uh, Spider-Man web slinger thing that kicks it up over a, a, a inside an, an arch onto a ramp and then back to the uh, the player. Yeah, I think nice. uh, um, what I understood is a lot of people are disappointed that there is no loop in the game. Mm. They would do. Yeah, people were expecting a, um, a ramp to make a, a, a 360 looping, something like that. But that's well, especially as, especially as it's shown on the back glass, you know, right right at the 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 area around the monitor. And it's worth mentioning the monitor on this game is not in the middle of the back glass, uh, not horizontally in the centre. It's actually off to the left hand side to allow for the artwork on the right hand side right. and the Hot Wheels logo. But there is a, a big loop. Uh, of uh, of orange track uh, in the background, and yeah, as you say, that's not that's not uh, replicated inside the game anywhere, which you think would be a you know a, a sort of a given that you'd be able to shoot shoot a 360 loop. But anyway, it's um, well, it does just, look really nice. It looks like it, that that could have been like a super jackpot shot where you you get the ball aligned on the flipper, and then you ha- then there is that one shot that opens up, and you can make that loop. And if you make it, then super jackpot or something like that. But um, yeah, that's not there. So I can see how some people would be disappointed uh, by that not being there. Uh, but it is what it is, mm. and uh, we haven't still uh, been able to play it or even seen proper um, uh, video footage of it. Um, so let's just uh, hold our judgments until we actually played it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure when that's going to be at the moment. What with uh, American Pinball, probably not manufacturing them at the moment, although the, I guess there'll be a, a few of them available uh, for uh, for shows when they start up again. Right. Even before they they actually get to mass man, manufacturing, but um, yeah, we're certainly looking forward to playing it, yeah. and just sort of looking forward to playing Heist. So both both the new games that came out in the past month. So that's um, that's the news from. Uh, oh, actually, before we move on, should probably just pop back to Multimorphic because um, although Heist was their their new release, there was a. Uh, there was something which we which we trailed last month, which was the the new software that goes with the cos- cosmic kart racing playfield, uh, which is cosmic kart racing 2.0, which uh, comes with a, a new career mode, uh, but also adds in um, internet and LAN connectivity, so you can play with other machines either in the same build or across the world right. now this uh, is it was announced last month but it's now available to download in beta format uh, if you want to if you have a machine and want to install it uh, on your cosmic kart racing to um cosmic kart racing upper playfield module then you can you can try it out and uh, connect with other people and use the the new career mode and the uh, the arcade mode as well yeah so, so it's not a it's not a finished release it's still in beta but um it's available as a free download, so uh, if you if you've got that module, you should certainly give it a go. Yeah. So um, and it's no longer time based; it's a three ball uh, game now. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So that's um, multimorphic and American pinball. Uh, so we, we mentioned earlier about uh, Stern pinball and what they might have launched, but. Um, as it turned out, they didn't. So um, let, let's look at the game that, um, that that is yet to come, I guess. Right. Um, well, um, uh, there was uh, a game announced for the 20th of March that would have been the uh, heavy metal uh, contract game. Um, interestingly, um, I was sending out my newsletter and I had contact with Stern Pinball and they actually asked me not to mention that game and I was like you already announced it, I cannot pretend that didn't happen Um, Mm -hmm. so instead they um, uh, as they probably realized it was on their Facebook and uh, and so on so they sent out a statement that um, the game is uh, postponed 
due to the current uh, situation, and that was just, uh, I think, a day before actually the uh, the stay-at-home policy was applied. Um, so even if they wanted to to take it into production, they can't right now. So. Um, and, uh, well, we're recording this podcast on the uh, 31st of March, which is the Tuesday, um, which would have been the Tuesday after Texas Pinball Festival. And usually that is um, the day that Stern Pinball uh, announces a, uh, a new title, which has been widely rumored to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, but that, uh, well, so far I haven't seen any announcement of such new game so that's also postponed i suppose until further notice and development of the uh, the situation where they can actually get back to uh, um, working in the factory and um, uh, actually building games and uh, having them available to um, to be sold yeah yes, that's right well, yeah that's the, that's what they're all about building and selling games and can't do that there's not much point in launching a new title or two right so um i don't know whether you uh, do we still want to discuss the uh, heavy metal uh, contract game in the sense that um, it's a um a re-theme of um, the Spider-Man home game that has been that we've seen in various iterations uh, also as a supreme themed game and as the uh, star wars home uh, edition uh, game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, um, I think it was available in, in two different versions, wasn't it? The, well, two different uh, cabinet artwork packages. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's, and it's, a, it's a tie-in it, with a company called Incendium, who, who are a, a sort of comic monster and metal collectible store. Right. So it's a contract game for them. Um, using the heavy metal brand, which um, is uh, was a, was a movie and, and a magazine. Well, it was first a magazine other, and later it was a movie. And uh, yes. I think there's also some sort of heavy metal uh, movie on Netflix, which is which is a more recent uh, uh, production. And um, uh, what's interesting to notice is that the um, um, I forgot his name. Um, maybe you have it. Um, the owner. Uh, or no, the editor of uh, Heavy Metal was actually also involved in the uh, co-creation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right. Okay. No, I, have to, I don't have that name, I'm afraid. Can't help you there. But um, so those those two games were expected to be uh, out now uh, and aren't. Um, the the um, Heavy Metal game was originally priced at $8,200, which is uh, well, know, a premium price. Yeah, uh, rather okay. premium, especially if you consider that the Spider-Man home game was probably half of that. Yeah, yes, and uh, Stern was saying it would, be, it would be built in limited quantities, but um, well, no indication of how many they were, they were expecting to build, but uh, I, I guess yeah. there was some kind of minimum quantity. I read that as sort of like uh, made-to-order, yeah, in, uh, although you would think that you think with all these things there would be a minimum number that, that would have to be built to make it worthwhile so developing the, the game at all. Yeah, that's what you think, but oh well. Yeah, so, so but let's, it's, let's say a minimum of 100 or something like that, but beyond that, yeah, um, so. built to order. But since the playfield is essentially the same as Supreme and the Supreme game is 25,000, then this is a bargain. It's all a matter of perspective, I guess. It is, yeah. Yeah, you could uh, you could retheme um, the heavy metal into a supreme and get it get it on cheap. Ooh! Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> that's a bit for that. You never know. Okay, so uh, well, with those games not being launched yet um, and to be covered when they are. Uh, Stern had been busy though doing um, quite a lot of sort of social media and and code updates. They released a, a video very recently of the the making of the, of their uh, the current title. I suppose it's still the current title, Stranger Things, where uh, Brian Eddy talks about uh, his return to pinball and the ideas that he came up with uh, for the uh, the Stranger Things game, his uh, his first title for Stern. 
elsewhere, Stern have been doing a lot of sort of social media interaction. Uh, they're doing the sort of plugging uh, their game room of the week um, awards or competition. Um, they're pushing the digital versions of their games, which are available obviously on uh, uh, multiple different platforms uh, for people to play when they're at home and can't go out to an arcade or a bar or a barcade and, and play them there. So uh, keep people interested in uh, in playing certain games. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, besides that, um, they've also been, uh, as I said, been generating some some new code for um, well, the first one I suppose is probably the most surprising one of all, which is uh, the Iron Man. Uh, both the original version and the Vault Edition have both received a a, a code update, version 1.85. Yes, which is generally believed to have come from from Lyman Sheets when he's been working at home. Which has added uh, a few new features, um, like a new skill shot. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with Iron Man or not, but um, you can you can uh, you can press and hold the left button, and the ball will go all the way around uh, when you launch it and come back to the left flipper. Well, now there is a, a, a skill shot available if you do that, where if you plunge it gently and get it into the top rollover lane, to you you can get um, a million plus points for doing that. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I know. Um, and also, um, there's, a, there's a new mini bonus feature, uh, which is available when you when you collect half of the the marks, the mark suits, um, and then when when you do that's available at the uh, the spinner. And there's been some some score balancing um, and new extra ball awards being added as well, which is nice. And um, some tweaks to some of the existing features of the of the game. So nice to see uh, Iron Man getting some love after all these years. You, know, you never quite know when uh, Stern are going to bring out new code for some of their uh, yeah. uh, classic games. Although so that was, uh, that was they nice. did rerun Iron Man um, not that long ago. I think last month they reran uh, some of the Vault Edition games for. Uh, I think it was a small run, but still. So it, it sort mm-hmm. of makes sense that it was back on their radar, software-wise. I suppose. Yeah, but the fact that the new updates are also available for the the very original model is uh, is a nice bonus for those people who own that game. Yes. So and uh, well, obviously there were more code updates with uh, Stern. Um, most notably, I'd say uh, Elvira House of Horrors is currently at uh, 0.93. Um, I've seen some uh, footage of the game. Um, Jack Danger had a, a live stream last Saturday, which is uh, recommended to watch um, because, um, from what at least from what I noticed, is uh, there is a lot of new Elvira speech which was in uh, uh, lacking in, in earlier versions so that makes the game a lot more fun I suppose uh, yeah and well, then the new the code adds um, new high school tables as well for the modes and uh, along with the new speech some new display effects and sounds uh, and some scoring tweaks as, as always happens along with some bug fixes right so 0.93 so getting closer to uh, the elusive 1.0 right so and then, uh, uh, not still still some way to go yet before it's it can be considered complete right so and uh, well stranger things the current title also uh, got a code update uh, but it was mostly uh, bug fixes the way i understood it yeah yeah not been 86 um Again, you know, quite a few updates before it gets to version 1.0, right. but uh, not not clear how much more is going to be added to that game, really. Right. But but as with Stern, um, other right. software updates, you never quite know what they're going to come up with. Right. Okay. So hold on. As you might hear in the background, I have a phone ringing and this is finally the moment Yay. that we've been waiting for for it's two, been two years in the making but we finally are going to get Gary Flower on the phone because he's calling in right now so let's hurry up before okay. he hangs up with yeah. which is what he usually does Wait. okay Gary welcome to the show hey, hey Gary mm, that doesn't sound too good Ooh. Gary you okay oh 
Mm. Perhaps we better hang up. We don't want to risk catching anything. Do we? Uh, why don't you call us back when you uh, um, get get better? I suppose. If, so. I guess. If you get yeah. better. Well, let's hope so. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, we were really anticipating and hoping for uh, Gary Flower to come on the show. But uh, as you can hear, um, apparently maybe he had a little frog in his throat or something like that. Now, also from from Stern, um, George Gomez was uh, as a guest on the, the 80s Arcade podcast. Right. And um, he had something to say about... Um, well, uh, an existing game of theirs um, and, a, and a potential future game. Right. Um, well, what he basically said is uh, at Stern they have been thinking about doing a sequel to the Beatles and that would be a, uh, most likely be Yellow Submarine themed. Um, Not but Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but that's that has nothing to do with the Beatles, of course. Um, no, of course not. No. So um, the question is: uh, obviously, Beatles was a very expensive um, license for Stern, and they uh, um, well, they paid a lot of money, uh, as Joe Kamenkow has uh, expressed uh, on multiple occasions, to get that license, um, and only to build uh, one thousand nine hundred and sixty-four games. Um, what I sort of read in between the lines and I don't want to go into the speculation area of things but what I sort of understood is that um, while CERN was supposed to be running a new run of games last year in January um, I don't think they actually did so in theory they might still be entitled to build I don't know how many Beatles games but if there's no demand for the current Beatles game, um, the best way to get to that number is re-theme the same playfield uh, with another theme and um, uh, see if Beatles fans are interested in, in that one. Yeah. So, if that were um, to happen... Make it a limited I'd, run? Right. Well, would, yeah. So, if that were to happen, my guess, and let me make... Sh- absolutely uh, sure that this is just my guess uh, that we would be could be seeing a rethemed Beatles playfield um, uh, like Yellow Submarine possibly with um, some additional songs uh, in there uh, but otherwise um, uh, well basically the same game uh, with some different songs well, it would be interesting if it uh, if it was a, a later version of the Beatles, you know, rather than the Beatle Mania one, which was the the, uh, the theme for the original uh, Beatles pinball. Right. It was a slightly later one that uh, that focused on some of their, their later works. Right. But would you, uh, if if such scenario as I'm just uh, um, sketching, would be likely? Do you think Stern would design a new playfield, or would they retheme the current existing Beatles playfield? Good question. Um, I would imagine it would be the same, but with um, some minor, uh, maybe artwork. Well, obviously the artwork, maybe some some trim changes. You know, it could be a. Uh, well, I mentioned the yellow, yellow trim. brick road <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yes, maybe maybe some glitter on the playfield or some uh, some different. Um, some different cut, different um, artwork on the uh, well, obviously on the cabinet sides, but also some different trim levels to it as well. So, different back glass like, and um, yeah. possibly also yeah, different, art, different uh, art package, diff, different topper. And yeah. uh, but yeah. oh well, uh, but but uh, still, according uh, uh, to to George, that was only discussed, and uh, I don't think there's anything. In development at the moment, so um, we uh, we might see that in the future, but it's definitely not going to be anytime soon. Especially since it's just in development, and then we have the current situation to take into account as well. So, yeah, and, and other games waiting to be launched. Yeah, right. Okay, so, so that that's the stern pinball situation. Um, who should we look at next? Uh, well, we mentioned um, Deep Root not launching. 
either their company or any of their games earlier this month, as uh, or earlier in in March, I should say. Right. As was intended. So it looks uh, looks like with the um, with the shutdown of pinball manufacturing and um, pinball companies, that um, one particular designer is no longer uh, an employee of the company. Right. Yeah. And there was a. Um, uh Something that Canada, um, in award three three time award winning uh, podcast, um, mentioned earlier in the month that uh, Dennis Nordman would no longer be uh, working at uh, Deep Root and now be working for Chicago Gaming. So, um, as good reporters do, we check our facts, and I uh, reached out to Ryan White of Chicago Gaming and I asked him about this rumor and according to Ryan he knows nothing of Dennis Nordman working for the company as an employee and um, basically he um, uh, said it was a rumor and he's not very happy with such rumor because uh, well as you know there's plenty of rumors going around of all the games that um, Chicago Gaming is supposed to be building like like Alien and uh, Queen and Playboy and, and all sorts of titles that um, have been associated with them and they know nothing about it so uh, that's um, a bit unfortunate um, although it does appear that Dennis Norman is indeed no longer working for Deep Root Pinball. Mm. Yes, I think he's probably back as a freelance uh, pinball designer again. Yeah, well, that means he can work for anybody. Um, and um, uh, well, it could be interesting because obviously Dennis is a uh, respected designer, but he also has um, a very good. Um, uh, connections or relations, I would say, with uh, with other manufacturers. I don't see him knocking on Stern's door anytime soon. But uh, what about Spooky Pinball? Yeah, well, I've certainly got some some history working there, so right. that would make sense. And uh, and Spooky, uh, of course, uh, have been recently looking to, to branch out into into designing other games, with, particularly with the the Ben Heck design, right? Which that is they're doing with Chicago Gaming. So, here's the full circle. So, that could be a construction that, that might be viable. Uh, but let's just wait and see how, how things develop. And, um, well, you never know. Um, but if Dennis is available for other manufacturers, then uh, that, that certainly creates potential. It's also yeah. interesting to, to wonder uh, why he's no longer with Deep Root. But, well, um, yes, that's the obvious question, but we that would just be purely speculation, and we, we don't know about that. Yeah, um, and, uh, I, I, I do have to say, well, I don't have to say it, but um, I have heard rumors, and I, uh, I have to express these are rumors, that there was around Expo time already some friction between um, uh, Dennis and uh, Deep Root, so... It's for me. It was not a complete surprise that Dennis is no longer working there, and that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> okay, right. Yes, uh, of course. Dennis didn't move down to San Antonio or, or the the area. He was he was always based back in his, his home in in uh, Illinois. Right, wasn't he? Yes. And um, for those of you wondering, like, who is this Dennis Nordman that they are talking about? Um, I suggest to uh, order a copy of Pinball Magazine number two, um, the award-winning Pinball Magazine, that is. Yes, two-time award-winning. Um, because the cover story in Pinball Magazine number two, uh, which recently has been reprinted, is about the uh, entire career of Dennis Nordman. Uh, up to where he was, like, say, uh, five years ago, something like that. So, And that's now available in the uh, Pinball Magazine web shop. So if you want to know more about Dennis Norman, then you know where to go. Absolutely. And uh, that's uh, everything, pretty much, about Dennis Norman in, in there that, uh, that you could possibly want to know up until that point. Yes. So, And anything beyond that, we will probably hear about uh, fairly soon. Um when he uh, he starts to uh, to tell us more about uh, what he's what he's going to be doing in the future, yeah. now you know he's not working uh, for Deep Root Pinball anymore. Yeah. Now the interesting thing uh, that we probably can address um, 
uh, you and I both, we visited Dennis Nordman at his um, uh, home in mm-hmm. Illinois um, a couple of years ago. Um, where we actually got to see and play a, um, uh, a white wood that he developed that uh, so far hasn't been taken into production. Now, we don't know whether that has been offered to, uh, uh, to Deep Root, uh, which might have been the case. Um, but obviously, Dennis is used to working from home and designing from home, and uh, uh, he's got uh, uh, Paul Reno as a um, uh, sort of right-hand to uh, to help him. Yeah. Um, together they did the um, the baseball game, which was uh, yeah. produced by um, uh, what's their name A company in Texas. Yes, I know who you mean. Yes, I want to say Liberty, but it wasn't Liberty. It was uh, no. Uh, oh well. Yeah. Amusement game company yeah. in Texas that that. Um, uh, made their um, um, pitch uh, and bat game baseball. Yeah. yes and um, uh, so that was interesting but uh, obviously Dennis and Paul have been working on uh, on other designs as well um, so who knows uh, what they have been working on and what Deep Root wasn't interested in for whatever reason mm. you never yeah. know yeah, and I, th- I think it's fair to say Dennis is, is always working on, on new designs, uh, it, be them for his own uh, amusement or, uh, or potential ideas for other manufacturers. So um, I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more coming out of uh, his studio. Yeah, so uh, well, uh, what I remember from, from the game, the Whitewood that we uh, saw and played, um, I think it had a, uh, I think it had 13 different skill shots. <laughs> yeah, better recollection than I do of that aspect of it. Okay, so well, that was very interesting, and um, oh well, um, we just have to wait. It was and certainly see, quite yeah. a large piece. I do remember that. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, so uh, um, now you mentioned um, what did we mention? We mentioned Haggis Pinball earlier, but um, of course they were also going to be at uh, both Texas Pinball Festival and the Midwest Gaming Classic. Yeah didn't end up leaving uh, Australia in order to, to go uh, or indeed ship their games I don't think either they were uh, very close to doing that but they're sort of as in the rest of the world kind of hunkering down and getting on with developing their Celts game um, Damien's you know, gone from doing these daily updates to much more infrequent updates in fact I think the last one is probably about two weeks ago now yeah um, so so there's really, really nothing more to um, to report on on the progress of that game at the moment. By the looks of it, it looks like they're just getting on and and trying to push push the design through to uh, the finishing line. Yeah, well, that that sort of goes for uh, more companies than than just Haggis Pimple. And there is, uh, for example, yeah. uh, Circus Maximus. Um, the only news that I that I recently read is that they are in the um, uh, stage of scanning uh, the playfield of Kingpin uh, again because apparently previous scans um, weren't good enough and they're not now going to try with a better mm. scanner. Um, I think we actually covered that uh, in last month's news. Could be, so yes. Well, that's the only yeah, thing that I, I, I recently remember. Yeah, I haven't heard any uh, any updates on that as to whether, uh, whether they've actually ended up with a, a high-quality scan of the, the existing Kingpin playfield yeah. or not. Obviously, they were supposed to be at Texas as well, and MGC, I suppose, but at least Texas. Yeah, and, uh, well, I, I, think that, I think that would have been with the, the, the original Kingpin that they built, not the uh, not yeah. any, any new version. So right. I don't think it would have, would have uh, shown much in the way of progress. Right. Um, uh, who also would have been at the, the Texas show, and we already talked about them. Uh, so let me revisit Chicago Gaming uh, briefly. Mm. Um, while we were expecting them to reveal a new game, um, they have been um, experiencing um, uh, supply chain issues as a result of the um, uh, coronavirus situation. Um, and you might think, like, what? Well, how is that possible? But obviously, um, they get some of their parts from China, 
And in China, the coronavirus situation has been uh, a real crisis already since uh, uh, January and Chinese New Year, causing hiccups in uh, Chicago gaming supply chain. So that explains uh, why uh, Medieval Madness Royal editions have been uh, delayed. And um, mm. um, that's too bad, obviously. Well, hopefully, now that things in China are sort of picking up again, um, slowly uh, things will um, uh, move forward for them. Um, and um, obviously, that has also uh, its effect on the reveal of uh, a new game. So uh, they are working on it, but it's not... They're not there yet to 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 make any announcements, I'd say at the moment. Yeah, especially as they already announced that they're working with Buki on uh, on the Ben Heck game. Right. So it's it's not like they're going to be short of work. No. So. Um, and uh, okay. Well, so so well, we covered Dutch Pinball, who are just cranking out games as the only company around. yeah right. yeah I think it was um, I think it was reported by uh, coin taker that uh, that they're getting around about 10 games a month from Dutch pinball right uh, well, at least uh, they were prior to the uh, co- coronavirus issues um, whether that's been whether that's uh, reduced now with if there are fewer people working on the, on the games I don't know but that was the that was kind of like their their standard output. So it's uh, 10 a month, you know, it's uh, 120 a year. It's going to take a, a little while before uh, they, they manage to fulfill all the pre-orders um, from the early achievers and all the new orders as well. Slow and steady so is good for me. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. As long as and, the game is all rushed. And, uh, they did share an update uh, yesterday uh, in which they say that they're still up and running. So at least... Slow and steady. Mm. We'll win the race. Good, hopefully. It's, it's good to hear that there are still pinballs being made, even in uh, the current situation. Right. So, well, so, we covered uh, Jersey Jack pinball. No news uh, from them. No, no uh, new game. Yeah. yeah. No, they're they're busy uh, relocating to Elbro yeah. Village. And I mentioned uh, Mike from Homepin as well. Um, Mm -hmm. I talked to him, um, I think, like two weeks ago. And uh, first of all, I'm glad to report he's doing fine. Um, He moved the company to Taiwan. And he's currently in the process of of basically setting up a new factory. Uh, They have a location. And uh, so they are building offices and uh, uh, storage rooms and and all that uh, uh, kind of stuff. Um, and everything that comes with it, like sorting out uh, massive amounts of, of different types of screws and butts and, and nuts and bolts and, and all that kind of stuff. And they're still waiting for containers to arrive from China with uh, more equipment and so on. Um, what will be interesting to um, uh, to notice is that um, he's planning on uh, outsourcing more um, uh, elements of um, uh, building pinball machines in the sense that in the previous factory they used to uh, uh, create their own cabinets they're now going to use a third party for that um, and uh, also for the um, uh, the wiring of the game um, cables and all that kind of stuff that's also being sourced out so they don't have to do that in house anymore it's just um, waiting till they um, are being brought in they will still do uh, playfield assembly um, but that's probably uh, uh, the majority of activities that they are planning to do mm-hmm. so drop, uh, build a playfield drop it in a cabinet and and then move it, uh, move on. So not not worry about building cabinets and wire harnesses and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, let's hope the uh, the China Zombie game is uh, a big success for them and uh, does well in in spreading pinball's reach across China. Right. The uh, it would be interesting to know whether or not the the move to Taiwan in any way impacts on the uh, the access to the Chinese market for uh, for their China Zombies game. 
or whether it's, uh, it makes no difference at all. I have no idea. We have to wait and see. But um, my, I expect it will take them at least, uh, I'd say probably at least one or two months before they even have the factory up and running. So, mm. um, oh, yeah. in the meantime, uh, Mike is uh, focusing on um, the uh, the replacement boards that he also is making um, for for Valley Williams games and also um, uh, Zakaria games and, and and so on. So uh, it's not that he's completely out of work. Uh, he can still focus on that and and uh, other stuff as well. So. Good. And, um, okay. Yeah. Well, glad he's okay. And uh, and moving on with his new facility. Right. And I think that sums it up for this month. I think. You know what? I think you're right. I think we've uh, we covered pretty much uh, everything. Uh, not the month we were expecting to be reporting on, but an interesting month nonetheless. And uh, the good news is that uh, pretty much all the things which which didn't happen this month will be happening later in the year or maybe next year, let's hope not. Um, and we'll be able to bring you all the details of those as and when they are um, announced. And uh, although the, well, we won't be going to the, to the Texas show this year or the Midwest Gaming Classic, uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll make next year's shows even more exciting and, and more, more anticipated. Yeah. So well, let's look forward to, to, uh, to 2021's uh, events. And... Um, no, we'll all be raring to go and uh, even more eager to, to bring you more details from the, from those shows and everything else, of course, once people yeah. back up. Obviously, it's a, uh, it's a huge disappointment because I always look forward to meeting a lot of uh, uh, listeners and uh, uh, readers of the magazine um, at these shows. And uh, obviously, uh, we're very sorry that we couldn't make it. Um, and also that the shows are cancelled and that nobody could make it. But um, let's just uh, try to stay safe, everybody, and hopefully we'll get to see you at another show uh, soon. Yes, and also um, if you, if it's at all possible, reach out to those shows and buy some of their merchandise that they've got. Um, you can buy it from their websites, and uh, certainly in the case of the Texas Pinball Show, uh, Pinball Festival, and the Midwest Gaming Classic, those two websites, um, TexasPinball.com and uh, MidwestGamingClassic.com, you can buy the T-shirts and the posters, and uh, and all kinds of swag that uh, will be especially memorable because they'll be for uh, commemorating shows which which didn't actually take place. So they'll be, have a special value this year, right? So and of um, course it, it helps helps the organisers uh, in the planning for next year's show to uh, to get that that income um, in the absence of of ticket sales. Right. Okay. So uh, last but not least, um, you and I both wrote an article for the uh, Texas Pinball Festival uh, program guide. You already yes. published your article on uh, pinballnews.com. Um, I haven't published my article yet, but I will be uh, publishing that soon on pinball-magazine.com. So, um, I'm looking forward to reading it, because uh, I do know what it's about, but I, I haven't read it yet. Right. So I'm, uh, it sounds like an interesting topic. Do you want to, do you want to let the listeners in on uh, exactly what, what it was you wrote about? Yes, I wrote about um, pinball flyer collect, uh, collectability. So collecting pinball flyers and uh, what happened to uh, the, the art of uh, the pinball flyer as um, they used to be very creative at a certain point in time. And um, more recently, uh, well, some companies tend to go with a certain template that they use over and over again and just change a couple of photos and uh, uh, text, but but basically the, all the flyers look the same. So um, I was wondering about whether uh, the art of creating uh, interesting pinball flyers is uh, lost, and I uh, I wrote yeah. an article about that, uh, which I think is um, well. I thought it was an interesting topic, and I think I came up with some interesting angles as well. Right, so look forward to, to reading that on pinball-magazine.com. In the uh, any idea when you're going to be putting that out? Uh, probably this week. Yes. So, but okay. uh, let's uh, hopefully by the time this podcast is uh, becomes available, 
the magazine, or the uh, the article will be available as well. Okay, great. And the uh, the article I wrote um, called Twenty Twenty Vision, looking back uh, twenty years, back to the start um, of Pinball News and the start of the Texas Pinball Festival, uh, is on the, uh, the Pinball News site. And uh, some interesting, uh, interesting. I want to say revelations, but uh, some, some details about what was happening back at the start of the century um, it, and how it's changed in, in, in those two decades. So, so uh, you can read that as well. So are we going to see big celebrations for the 20th anniversary of Pinball News? Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's already happened. So, uh, And you didn't guess, invite uh, me. <laughs> what? I didn't, invi- I didn't invite me. Well, that must have been was, rather uh, boring then. <laughs> well, I mean, probably do it at uh, once Pinball is, is back up and running and uh, we, we can have a proper celebration uh, at, a, at a big event and, uh, and get, uh, no, maybe have a, well, we were due to have a, a, a Pinball News Classic tournament as part of the UK Pinball Open, but uh, unfortunately we've had to postpone that. But, uh, you know, maybe that will happen later in the year. In which case, uh, that will be a, a very good chance to uh, to hold a, a bit of a, a party. Right. Well, I think as soon as we are able to do pinball events again, that that's reason enough for a party already. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think everyone will be uh, will be uh, you know, will be desperate to get out of the house and get get out onto the location and pinball clubs and bars and arcades and uh, arcades and and. and Basically, to try out all these new games and uh, and and um, support your local and, operator and, 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 and support them and play with their friends you know, on location, which is uh, which is what uh, really needs to happen to help support them uh, financially. Right. Okay. So that's it for this uh, this month. Um, if you are um, a subscriber of the Pinball Magazine newsletter. You might have noticed there is a slight uh, shift in when the newsletter is coming out. Um, And, well, basically the idea is that uh, at the beginning of the month I'll be sending out a newsletter uh, with a link to this podcast. And around the middle of the month I will be sending out the regular monthly update, but now it's covering from mid-month to mid-month. Um, so there will be two contact moments. Uh, you'll be receiving two newsletters every uh, every month um, instead of um, trying to put it all in one newsletter. So um, so if you're expect waiting for the Pinball Magazine newsletter to arrive um, with the with the full recap of the month, then that's in due in about two uh, two weeks, I'd say. And um, great. I suppose that's it. So let's wrap uh, wrap this up, and hopefully, um, um, yeah. we'll be back next well, month. For, uh, I have no idea. Listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. I, I have no idea what the world will look like next month. <laughs> but no, I have a horrible feeling it's we'll, going to look very similar to this month. <laughs> well, hopefully, we'll still be there, and uh, uh, our readers will still be there. So um, uh, please uh, stay home, keep your distance, and. Um, Hopefully, yeah, until next time. Wash off. your hands. Yes. Okay. okay. Stay home, take care, and be safe. And we'll see you next month for a look back on April 2020. Okay. Until then, from uh, me, Martin Ayer, and from Jonathan Houston, editor of the two time Twippy Award winning Pinball Magazine, we say goodbye. Bye bye.